you. And yeah, when I started my research, well, I, I started playing in bands, in punk bands when I was a teenager. So I'm basically a pop musician. And I've been a pop musician all my life, but when I started my research, I wanted to explore the electric music uh, composition. And then throughout the whole process, I started joining both both types of music. So I started including my electronic or electric music compositions into my popular music practice. So this is just a small section of my research. I'm about to submit my submit my dissertation in a couple of months. So yeah, this is just a small section of, of my whole uh, research. So I imagine there's gonna be lots of questions from you in the end. Uh, the whole idea comes from when I was doing my masters, and in my master dissertation project, I made a composition only using sounds from the London transportation system. So, yeah, you can see it. It is easier. sound or noise pollution, what I call negative sound. So I'm recontextualizing uh, this sound into a musical. I'm putting this in a, in a popular music frame, which is pretty much the, the main principle of modern art, where that, that says that if it's in a museum, it should be art. So if it's in a musical context, it should be music and not, not noise pollution anymore. So also one of the aims is to create awareness of the soundscape that surrounds us, so we can be yeah, more aware of the dangers of this and how we can improve our quality of life by avoiding these sort of situations or the noise. So the term negative sound, what I call negative sound, is uh, I call it what for me is on this higher sound. So it could be anything that interferes with your current activity. So for instance, when you're in the street talking and somebody talks next to you and it's interrupted, or when somebody's on the when you're on the bus and somebody's talking on the phone next to you and, and it's uh, interrupting your conversation or or yeah, your current activity. So it could be also sounds of ambulances, sounds of traffic noise and the yeah, car beeping, which is a very subjective idea because for me that phone conversation could be very important but for the person next to me it's just noise. Uh, so all the sound material used for the compositions 
in this one of my recording journeys around Dawson in London. So yeah, one of the I call this activity active recording. There is passive recording. Passive recording is when you sit and just record what's going on around. But the active recording is when you look for the source. So when I was going through Dawson, I was looking for places that were very noisy. So I was basically composing through walking. And so if I, if I heard something could be interesting in, in the next uh, sidewalk, I was changing my sidewalk and like pretty much like chasing the noise pollution. So you can see here that I'm wearing uh, headphones, but those are actually microphones. So I'm doing everything in my noro. And this is the map of the journey from Dawson to Shoreditch, which are very noisy areas in London, full of bars and full of people. So it was a <coughs> summer night, uh, Thursday night, so it's meant to be very noisy, very crowded. So one of my electroacoustic compositions is that I made out of this recording. It's the one I'm going to show you now, but this is only electroacoustic. So this is the, the recording without any manipulation. And this is just the recording. after all the sonic manipul manipulation and this is the result just a small bit So the idea was to use filters and to keep the beat all the time as if you were living next door to a bar. So yeah, that's the electroacoustic manipulation. So now I'm going to show you how I include this type of manipulation into popular music. So I'm working with this Swedish singer called Max Nerd, and we use sounds from train stations, airports, sidewalks, motorways, and this is the result.
parts also, not only to make the the sounds or the recordings to fit into the music, but also to make the, her voice to fit into the, uh, the recordings. So I'm filtering her voice and I'm using big lyrics and long lyrics in order to make it sound like she was also part of the station, the train station, where I'm taking the samples from. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you a video of how the mixing process works and how the layering process works as well. So firstly, I'm going to show you the, the, all the field recordings together in the session. So these four channels are the, the, the field recordings. So I don't use any processing, only a pin of EQ, but I'm, and rear, but I'm not using any type of uh, like distorting effect. So, sound in the player, an actual video player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see Thank you. 
second layer, this part. So, so in this track, I'm using automation. So I'm, I'm automating the rear just to make to try the feeling that the ambulance is comes closer and then goes very far away. So the same the ambulance sound. Also using rear.
all this experiment led me to join my academic practice, to my popular music practice. And the idea is to go a little bit further with this practice and research. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you. This one sounds very urban. Are you planning to have a more rural album? <laughs> that's yeah, I think that's a very good suggestion because it's you know yeah. I tend to record because I grew up in a big city, noisy city, and I've lived always in big cities. In my kind of landscape, my soundscape is probably in the urban soundscape. And uh, but yeah, it's a very good suggestion. We try to make to to relate always the recording to the subject of the song. So in this one she's talking now about going out at night and those things and we're using sounds from bars and going out and there's so the tracks that are more related to or that track that where the subject is different and we use different types of field recordings to, to make it. But yeah I have well we haven't written any yeah. songs about being in the countryside yet. But it's a, it's a very good suggestion. Do you always allow the sounds to occur naturally, or do sometimes you use your own intervention and strike something to recall the sound of it? I did it a lot more before, but I got to a point when I was thinking that if I'm going to manipulate the sound so much that it's going to be not recognizable in the end, so what's the point of using field recording? If I'm going to basically take all the essence of the, 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 the sound field out and just, yeah, I was thinking I could use synths instead of using uh, yeah, samples. So, so yeah, to, to extend that, yeah, I, try, I, I started manipulating the sound more and like making kicks out of the sounds, and, but then it was like, oh, well, I can use a kick instead. So now, at this point, I'm trying not to touch any field recording, just to put it in the context and that's it. Using a little bit of EQ, we're, but no more than that. Have you heard of Burning Crosses work? Sorry? Burning Crosses, have you heard it? No. Oh, okay. He, he does field recordings and makes electroacoustic compositions as well. And he's recorded like all over the world. Like, he, I mean, he's taken field recordings from all over different parts of the world. Um, he's, he actually like um, coined some of the terminology in acoustic ecology, so you should uh -huh. definitely check him out. He's, uh -huh. he's really cool. What's the name, sorry? Bernie Krauss. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.